website? We do have a website. It's again in the gold sheet. It's www.theandtrustgroup.com. And has, it's, just, it's a wonderful website, deep with information about all kinds of things, including links to the IRS, and, you know, the tax, the codes that, that say that, yes, it's okay to self-direct it. And you've been able to do this for 30 years. So thanks for asking. Yes? Well, don't you have to have some kind of a flush fund within the IRA to uh, use for maintenance and Good tax question. purposes? Yes, you have to have a flush fund in the IRA to get a buyout. I mean, is that a transaction that your group has to do, or can somebody external actually? Well, here's how it works. If, you, if, you, if, you're, if your IRA buys a piece of property, yes, you need to have money in there because your IRA is going to be then responsible to pay any um, expenses. Your IRA gets the proceeds, your IRA pays the expenses. Property taxes come due, you need to have a slush fund in there. You have a vacancy, you need to have extra money in there um, to cover that. You're, absolutely, you do. Um, so we recommend, well, actually, most uh, we didn't even get into some of the different issues like non-recourse lending, and IRA can actually take a loan. But um, the non-recourse lenders recommend a 10% cushion. But yeah, you want to have a cushion in there. And what, what happens if you fall short? What are you going to do? Um, you can make a contribution. You can take a non-recourse loan, maybe from somebody else's IRA. You can, and there are I'm still non-recourse lenders. My list is, I had 15 last January. This is January 6th, still standing. Um, people who are lending to self-directed IRAs. Or you can, if you have another IRA, it's, you can transfer the money over and, and, and use that for this house. So there, there are ways, or just liquidate the asset if you have to. And so, I, again, I just wanted to thank you. I know everybody. Oh, does Al have a question? Yeah? When you own a, a property and the tenant comes with your IRA, and you're yes. an individual, what type of, there's prohibitions about how you can manage it in the IRA. What type of prohibitions are there uh, on you as an individual when you have that tenancy in common? Okay, I mean, Al's asking if you own a property with your IRA, you close concurrently, your tenants in common, you know, what, what are the prohibitions? And the, the thing of it is, is if your IRA is involved, that those that those rules supersede, you know, your, your private your private rules. But you're still you're not allowed to personally manage the property. You, you can be a general contractor. You can collect rents. All the rents go back to the IRA, tax free or tax deferred. Um, if there's maintenance, you can act as a general contractor and hire that plumber, hire that roofer, and, and that's how it works. Yes. Uh, I, uh, what about gray property, uh, like semi dirty properties, like land? Can you put it in an LLC before you transfer it to the can you put properties in an LLC before you transfer? Absolutely, and that's what we're going to be talking about on the 13th, the IRA-owned LLC. You sure can, and people recommend that for, um, you know, for liability, for, you know, to save yourself some, uh, some headaches. And, and again, the IRA-owned LLC has got, is, a, is a gray area of law. There's something called the Swanson decision that allows you to do that where it's not considered self-dealing. I mean, maybe getting a little too technical, but uh, you absolutely can do it, and a lot of people do. Uh, the IRA-owned LLC is a big deal. Yes? If you close concurrently with your uh, with your IRA, can you buy? You said fractional ownership. Can you buy a timeshare? You, 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 absolutely. Anything for investment purposes only. Sure, your IRA can buy a timeshare. Absolutely. But, then, like the but you can't use it. You can't have personal use. You can buy a timeshare and rent it out to someone else. But yeah. you, you can't buy a vacation home. You can't buy um, anything that you have personal use of. And technically, even if you own a rental property, you're not even allowed. You're not even supposed to stay in there one night. But I'll tell you what some of my clients have done. Uh, if, they, if they want to do that. But maybe neighbors, they live next door, they're best friends, they both love the vacation in Hawaii. There may be uh, couple A will buy a condo and couple B will buy a condo next to each other and they'll just stay in each other's condo, you know. <laughs> so there, there are ways to follow the rules, stay within the guidelines, stay within the law, and still enjoy self-directed IRA. Yes? Is there, uh, in terms of buying real estate, does do the rules permit any borrowing, or are we talking about all, you know, hundred percent purchases of with your IRA money? Is there any way to get a loan at the same time? And well, here's a couple of things. One, you're going to get a. You would think that you're going to get a traditional mortgage, maybe for eighty percent, and have your IRA come in with twenty percent. We're fine with that. The IRS is fine with that. But normally, the mortgage, the mortgage lender, and the underwriter won't allow it because. And normally they don't want to partner with an IRA because of uh, being able, you know, recourse, because of being able to come after it. But an IRA itself, since I do have a couple more minutes, I'll mention that an IRA can take out a loan. It's called a non-recourse loan. I know California is already a non-recourse state, but what a non-recourse loan means is that, is that the lender is only going to come against the property, not against you as an individual, because you're not allowed by law to personally guarantee a loan to an IRA. And they're not, they're not going to come against the IRA either just the property. Now, like I mentioned, I have six lenders who still do this. Uh, and, 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 and if your property, if the IRA does borrow money on one of these non-recourse loans, 
yes, you want to put 30 to 40 percent down. That's what they're looking for. Um, additionally, they, your IRA will be something, uh, subject to something called UBIT, unrelated business income tax, or UDFI, unrelated debt finance income tax. And so it's the time when an IRA can be taxed. And again, we get into this in the advanced course, but if your IRA is going to borrow money, it can do that. Uh, you're going to pay tax on the gain that was created by leverage. But sometimes that makes sense. Sometimes you're still going to make a, a roaring profit because you ended up borrowing money and, and hey, you were able to take advantage of the situation that wasn't otherwise there. So an IRA can take that alone, usually not with a conventional conforming typical loan that we're thinking of. Yes? Yeah, um, I'm sorry, that, um, um, actually, you know, self employed. I'm sure most of us here self employed, right? Brokers and agents. I, I understand we can only um, have something like a this IRA. Is, is that the same thing? Yeah. That's a good point. He, he's asking, you know, he's self employed. He said, you know, most of us are self employed. He's talking about having a SEP IRA. Yes, you can self direct. Hey, thank you for bringing that up. You can self direct a traditional or Roth, oh, okay. a SEP, a simple, um, even a spousal IRA. You can self-direct an individual K. You can even self-direct an HSA, a health savings account, where you have a high deductible health plan and a health savings account. You can self-direct that. Uh, that health sa an HSA is amazing because it's tax-free and tax-free out as long as you use it for, uh, you know, for medical purposes. Um, so you can self-direct also a Coverdell uh, savings account for kids. Some people will you know, get a Coverdell, put a couple of thousand dollars in there after a couple of years, maybe buy a piece of pre-developed land, and then when the child is 18 ready to go to college, they sell that land and they have money for college. I think I heard Billy Hebron in, a, in an interview uh, give that very uh, very suggestion. I think, that's a, I think that's a great suggestion. So there's that. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Also, um, you said that this money, we can buy anything, right? Pretty much this for investment purposes. Yeah, you can buy anything for investment purposes. Like you know, collections, anything? You cannot buy collectibles. Oh, okay. Anything except life insurance and collectibles. But if you have one of these HSAs, mm -hmm. you can self-direct, you can buy, actually your HSA can pay for um, long-term care for you. It's allowed. Oh. Just so you know. <coughs> yes? I got a question on chain of title. Okay. Um, I'm sure everybody here is thinking about something. <laughs> um, how far back, how many transactions back do you have to go to oh. insulate yourself before, <laughs> it gets, before it gets into your IRA? Yeah. How many? Yeah. yeah. See, I got 100 I get pieces you. of property. Right. How many times do I have to transfer before it hits and goes into the account? All right. So basically, so you can, can you, like you own this property one, a while ago, and you sold it and sold it, sold it. You want to rebuy it into your IRA? And you previously yeah. owned it, right? Well, the IRS doesn't have any hard and fast rules about that. They have something called the indirect rule, where if you can't do it like this, don't try and go around the corner and do it like that because they'll they'll nab you, and it's, and it's not good. There is no answer though. How many layers? Uh, you know, you previously owned it. It has things it has to do with intent. If the IRS is going to talk to you, it's going to be you know, what did you intend to do? If you actually got in trouble for it, which is really, you know, a chance of that or my name. Yes? I, I heard you can buy gold. Can you also buy uh, silver, platinum, yes. palladium? You can. Yeah, you can buy gold and silver with your IRA, yes. In fact, I had a client who <coughs> did, did that yesterday, put 100,000 of gold, 100,000 of silver yesterday. Absolutely. And so uh, what, what's wild about this is that this is where the money is. And so business has been um, booming. It's been incredibly uh, busy with people looking for new things to do with their IRAs. And you can go out there and talk to people and give them opportunities to perhaps invest in things that are really, really going to help.